So we are back with our BSGI 4.0. Today we are going to talk about the ban of non-basmati rice, which has created a global shortage of rice. There are long queues of NRIs at the retail store. So I would like to ask you what marketing strategies or supply chain solutions could be there so that the rice reaches the people, those who need it, and these problems could be resolved. Um, now let's look at this uh, issue from a holistic point of view. Mm. Okay, and for that, um, uh, decent understanding of the geography, decent understanding of the history is required, mm. uh, which tells the motivation of the people, different com countries, and the politicians within those countries, right. and the politics uh, dynamics of those countries, mm. uh, which happens because if uh, certain things uh, uh, like oil prices going up. On top of that, mm -hmm. food prices going up, so on. Even Europe uh, reached the recession level. Germany mm -hmm. specifically reached. Right. Others are close to that. Almost zero growth rate. Mm -hmm. Right now, with zero growth rate, obviously the pressures uh, come, and a similar pressures, of course, come on the um, um, poorer countries, developing countries, uh, exactly Africa, so or forty-five mm -hmm. odd nations. Then in Asia also, many of them are not all that great. A uh, few in the South <coughs> Africa. So, uh, if you total it up, about 50, 60 countries do have severe uh, food security issues. Uh, and and uh, the imbalances which occur elsewhere, like, like Europe, like US, like Australia, uh, can be absorbed. Uh, by buying those things, maybe at a slightly higher price or higher mm. price, but they can absorb those higher prices. Mm. They have choices. Second point is, that over a period of time, supply chains get developed according to where something is produced and where something is consumed, where it's extra, mm. and so on. And it's not a joke. In India today, Food Corporation of India has a stock of 56 million tons. Right. And now, if you have to imagine what is the storage space required for it. Okay. But supposing tomorrow we say, let's stock 10, 14 more mm. million tons. Mm. So how are we going to do it? Yeah, that would, would be a problem. Uh, just that would be a problem. Or if we let go of, mm. let's say, 20 million tons, which mm. Ukraine is not able to supply. Mm. And because we want to be goody goody, right? And then what happens about our requirements? Because maybe the next crop is not that good. Exactly. The fluctuations are there because mm. of weather. And uh, since age old um, uh, histories, if you read, uh, the kings um, who uh, developed good um, grain storage uh, in their empires were the ones who were successful. Because, they were, because right. their population survived, they had more people for the military, etc. etc. Now, second point, therefore, immediately let's see that um, after the Second World War, uh, there was a formation of Soviet Union, uh, which had all the countries, which are Eastern European countries now, even Central Asian countries, kind of under that umbrella, and it was the largest mass by far, um, uh, reasonably large, uh, this thing. And so, their supply chains, for example, oil going, coming from Siberia, Pipeline, which, which is in the uh, 1990s, um, all the way to Hamburg in Germany. Hmm. $14 billion it cost them at that time. And Russia built it. Okay. Now, similarly, these ports in the Black Sea, because they are the warm water ports, all the rest of the ports, including Vladivostok, uh, are frozen during the winter. They have these nuclear powered uh, ships which, which go through even the frozen thing, but that's a very expensive uh, operation. So, uh, they require warm water ports, then they require proper exits, and all of them are through <coughs> states. This mm. state which is there in Black Sea is controlled by Turkey. Right. Su Suez Canal is um, controlled by in some years. Mm. And how much of the thing passes through that? And then we have the Malacca state here where we do have some influence, India and, and China. But Malacca State, um, 80 per, no, not 80, 60 percent of the trade of Asia passes through Malacca State. Just one state. Okay. So, if I say that, you know, okay, let's not ship through uh, Black Sea. Well, let's ship via the Danube. Okay. And you can't pay infrastructure. It's not there. Let's ship through the friendly European countries. They say, no, man, we don't want it. Hmm. Um, and then when we come closer, uh, it's the question of branding. Now, we just take Basmati rice first. Basmati rice basically is exported by India and Pakistan. Pakistan, right. 
it's long grain, it is aromatic, it is very good and even at least in my family, those who are in the farming, they have developed non-cholesterol variety also. So a lot of work has been done um, and so it is very popular. Now whole of the Middle East eats that rice. Mm. Even if Pakistanis export it, it is sold under Tilda brand name, Indian brand name. Because they have their... Uh, Branding. Uh, no, they have their confidence in Tilda. Mm-hmm. They don't have a confidence in XYZ uh, person sending it. So this is the marketing issue. The same thing will be there that it's not the Ukraine wheat which is going to sell. It's the Turkey which is going to make flour out of it and then sell flour. Hmm. Or even bread because they are very close by. Right. Huh? So, 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 so we have to see where the value addition is taking place, and and whether it can take place, whether the semiconductor chips. USA has tried to um, ease China out of it. What has happened? Nothing has happened. Because how are you going to develop all those um, suppliers overnight of small small components? Hmm. So it will take a decade uh, for them to do it, and finally they are withdrawing from that policy because. Their own production has not come up. Uh, so now without going going to too much detail of it, the agriculture products supply chains are not new. They are since centuries. They are since centuries. Hmm. So now let's come to the rice. <coughs> Asia is the largest producer of rice. It is also the largest consumer of rice. Mm-hmm. It is also the largest importer of rice. Um, rice it's also the largest exporter. Mm. It's one of our staple food. It's also the largest exporter. Mm. Mm-hmm. And India is the largest exporter. Because we did certain things during the last few decades and uh, our productivity is well. And the weather has been generally fine, but with a huge amount of rain also, rice it doesn't matter much. Okay, now, um, um, so, so, but they all send things to each other. For example, USA imports rice and also exports rice, a particular mm. variety of rice. The, the whole variety has come into the picture, you know, what you're going to make with it and so on and so forth. So here if the here if the wheat, so much of it is withdrawn and not available in the markets, what will happen? Those who can consume rice, mm. or even if they did not consume rice, they may eat rice. Got it? So the demand for rice will go up. The prices of rice will go further. Price of rice will go further. So therefore, government of India has preempted it. Hmm. As soon as they heard that that the wheat uh, initiative, uh, grain initiative, has not <coughs> been approved by the Russia, they must have talked to each other, etc. Hmm. They have put a ban on that. Otherwise, people would have heard it because there are traders with huge amounts of money. Large companies are there who will just hold the rice. Hmm. It's for black marketing. Not black marketing, marketing. Marketing when prices go high. Ah, so that is the business hmm. because these things then fluctuate every day. They fluctuate okay. every day. Prices fluctuate every day. There's nothing wrong. And they're, they're, they're buying it and they're taking a risk of whether it goes up or not. Hmm. So we in India don't have that large, uh, those large companies, even even uh, even uh, Indian governments. Indian government basically under FCI stocks, well, it does stock rice also. But basically for economic production, mm. um, not for trading purposes. So for trading purposes, therefore, we are talking now of contracts which might run into millions of tons. And is everything going to be exported from Bombay? Where is the extra capacity there? Mm. And, if, and if we were trying to develop the ports on the side quickly, and then it becomes a political issue. Exactly. Then only one party is being allowed, a second mm. party is being allowed. Anyway, let me stop there. That's why Middle East is helping us to develop these additional ports also. They understand. Middle East today is dependent on Indian rice. If India does not send, of course, they eat basmati now because they can mm. afford it. But for some reason, if India does not export basmati, who book him again? All these disguise. Because Pakistan will not be able to make up. Because their production will not match their yes, demand. It's not much. It's not mm. much. And also confidence is not there. Right. With great effort, the Indian rice it comes mostly from Karnal, which, which is Vasmati, which is a very good factory. It's very neat, clean, modern, and packed very well. No touching of hands, etc., etc. And no no cheating. I, I want to charge you so many dollars per ton extra, but no cheating. Okay. So, now let's sum it up, therefore, what happens. 
what we are seeing is that the uh, Africa is going to be under a uh, lot of pressure. Mm. But though Russian president has been criticized mm. by UN etc. That they have broken the contract. No, there is no agreement. They have broken. It was going to finish on that day. Right. It, it got expired. It was expired. Mm. You fulfill your um, um, other side of the conditions. We will come back to it. But you want to come and bomb our Crimea and you want to come and bomb uh, uh, our bridges. Well, thank you very much. We also know how to bomb. Mm. Okay. So, so what is likely to happen? That the summit which um, Mr. Putin has called for the next three days in St. Petersburg. Mm. He has also set up meetings with individual presidents mm. or heads of state. And uh, my guess is, and we will talk about it in the next one, uh, that he will negotiate the quantities they need. Right. And whether he sends it from India or he sends it from um, uh, Russia, Russia or wherever, mm. right, or Turkey, he will arrange that it is the Russian ships carrying that to these African countries. If the wheat hum day, they hum dusri allow karna day, uske baad mein aap hamare upar lanchan bhi lagate ho. See, the media is controlled by some people and they keep on talking about it. On the other hand, Ukraine chances very, very small that they can pass through those East European countries. Because it will upset their systems. Hmm. Why should they? They will actually go the one step further that we don't want to give aid to the soldiers. Why can't they sort it out? So this is how uh, um, the geopolitics, marketing policy, government being able to control something rather than letting it to be the traders. And that can happen in US and Europe, but not in a place like India or Thailand. And so, on. so Vietnam, Thailand, and India actually export 80% of this hmm. put together. So we are developing some joint relationships um, for Upper Ganga and all that. Six countries are involved, they are all rice exporters. And Upper Ganga is that goes well, that side, you know, with Myanmar, Thailand, and, uh, Vietnam. Vietnam and uh, Tha and, uh, and uh, one more. One. Yeah, recently we... That was Cambodia, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, so, so therefore that is the belt which in future will become a consolidated exporting base. So can we say they'll make a cartel and they, they will, will make a cartel. Rule the they will make a cartel. They'll make a who cartel. doesn't make a cartel, by the way? Huh? Is the oil not making? <laughs> huh? Has, who doesn't make a cartel? I mean, if you want to survive, otherwise they will screw you. Right. That's yeah. what yeah. is yeah. the powerful. strategy yeah. economically yeah. also. Right. So we will wait till the summit thing comes out as to how, how Russia manages the situation now so that it doesn't get a bad name of exactly. uh, stopping the grain supplies to um, food insecurity or things, but also doesn't give credit to UN to, mm -hmm. to, to, to solve it when their interests are not in it. So we end here. It was a very fruitful discussion talking about the logistics supply chain and the marketing and how prices will be affected. In the rest, we'll talk about the recent summit of Russia at St. Petersburg and other countries and how is it going to affect Africa, Vietnam and other countries in our BSGI 5.0. Thank you. Thank you.